Hello and welcome to a new video on the Crypto2 YouTube channel in the Basics of Cryptology series. This video covers the topic key space, and the video is structured into different parts. In the first part, we want to discuss the definition of key space. Then, in the second part, we will have a look at classic ciphers key space examples. After that, we will have a look at modern ciphers key space examples. And finally, we will have a look at different ciphers and their key spaces in Crypto2. As with all videos of the Basics of Cryptology series, we have a look at we are right now with respect to cryptology. And as we all know, cryptography is the art of making ciphers and cryptanalysis is the art of breaking ciphers. And this video will cover everything. Since key space or the analysis of key spaces is also part of cryptography and cryptanalysis. And also classical as well as modern ciphers have key spaces. So everything in this video is marked green on this graph here. This slide is a recapitulation of part one of this series. And a key space or a cryptographic key space is a set of all possible keys of a cipher. And the key space size is a number of all elements, which are of course keys of this set. And usually cryptographers and cryptanalysts give this number as a power of two, but why do we so? Powers like two to the power of 40 and two to the power of 12 are easier to say than one trillion, 99 billion, 511 million, 627,776. And it makes all algorithms easier comparable. And for me as a cryptanalyst, it gives a feeling of the size of a cipher. For instance, a cipher with a key space of 2 to the power of 40, I estimate can be searched through, for instance, in a night on a single computer. And a cipher with a key space of 2 to the power of 80 is for me a secure cipher. Or their secure cipher key space sizes start for me. And modern ciphers work on bits. And to compute the key space size of such a modern cipher, you just take 2 to the power of the number of bits of the key. And therefore, we use powers of 2. And today we say that key spaces having sizes smaller than 2 to the power of 80 can be searched through. That's what I already said with ciphers for me with a key space size of 2 to the power of 80 are secure. And already in 1998, the data encryption standard or DES cipher key space, which is 2 to the power of 56, could be searched through in about 56 hours with distributed computing. And in 2008, the key space was searched through then in less than 24 hours using specialized hardware. And this specialized hardware is called Copa Cobana. Now let's have a look at how to calculate key space sizes. And with classical ciphers, this can be done, for instance, with counting and combinatorics. What that means, I will show you on the next slides. And with modern ciphers, for instance, with symmetric ciphers, you just take the key and raise 2 to the power of number of bits in the key. And with asymmetric ciphers, for instance, RSA, the key length is defined as number of bits of the module. But the key space and size cannot easily be computed. And then we have hash functions, which we also covered in this Basics of Cryptology series. And clearly, hash functions have no key space size, but a hash space. And this hash space size computation is similar to the key space size computation of modern ciphers. And we also give these as a power of two. Now let's have a look at classic ciphers key space examples. And my first cipher I want to have a look at here is a Caesar cipher. And as we know, the Caesar cipher has 26 different shift values, meaning 26 different cryptographic keys. And to compute the key space size, we compute the logarithm of the base 2 of 26. And this is about 4.7. So our key space size is 2 to the power of 4.7. Then my next example is a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. But before I have a look at this, I want to show you the right side here, and I have here a hint. For instance, when you want to calculate the logarithm of base 2 here, and you have your calculator and you only have log 10 or log e, there is a 
nice way of changing the base. It's called change of base here. And you take the logarithm of your, the value you want to compute, for instance, x to the base of 10. And then you just divide this by the logarithm of the base 10 of 2. And then you get the logarithm x of base of 2. So this is an easy way to change the base with your calculator. Now let's come back to our simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. And to compute here the key space, we take 26. And this is the number of all letters that we have in our alphabet. Multiply 25, multiply 24, and so on, and so on, and so on. Multiply 2, multiply 1. And as you see here, this is the factorial of 26. And this is the number of keys. And when we compute this, we get this really huge number here. And then, of course, we compute the logarithm of the base 2 of this number here. And we get about 88.4. So the key space size of the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher is 2 to the power of 88.4. And this means that you cannot search through the complete space or key space of a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. But as we already know, clearly this cipher can be broken using statistical and frequency analysis. Then we have here the columnar transposition cipher. And we want to also compute the key space size of this and the columnar transposition cipher for a key length of n. So we have a keyword with n letters. It's n factorial. Since this is the number of permutations you can do of a string with length n. Then we have, of course, smaller keywords than n. So we have n minus 1 factorial, then n minus 2 factorial and so on. And of course, the easiest or the smallest key that we can take for a columnar transposition cipher has length of 1. And here we have to add all these numbers. And when we compute this, we compute 10 factorial plus 9 factorial plus 8 factorial and so on and so on and so on. And then when we have a columnar transposition cipher with key length up to 10, we have about 4 million different keys. And now we compute also the logarithm of this to the base of 2 and we get about 21.95. So the key space size of a columnar transposition cipher with all keys up to a length n equal to 10 is about 2 to the power of 21.95. Now I have two other examples of more complex classical ciphers. The first one is the ADF GVX cipher. And if you don't know how this cipher works, you should have a look at my video about the ADF GVX cipher on this YouTube channel. And the ADF GVX cipher has two key spaces that have to be combined. It has a substitution key space and it has a transposition key space. And since these have to be combined, we have to multiply both of these. And you always have to multiply key spaces if you have to search these as a whole. If you can perform, for instance, as we can see here, a brute force search on different key length that are not combined, then you have to add these here. And if you have to search through both key spaces to find the key, then you have to multiply these. And the substitution key space size we already computed here with the factorial of 26. And the transposition key space size, we also have here an equation from the slide before. And clearly, you can adapt the key space size of the ADF GVX with the length of n here. Then I have another example here, and this is an Enigma machine, and this is the most complex classic cipher we have in this video here. And if you want to know some details of the Enigma machine, I have two videos right now specifically about the Enigma machine, so you could have a look at these videos. And in this example here, we have a look also at the three rotor Enigma. So we have three different rotors. And the key space size of the Enigma consists of four different parts. It's which rotors we use. So we have three out of five rotors. So we multiply five, four, and three and get 60, which is about six bit. Then that means two to the power of six. And these numbers here are rounded up. So don't wonder when you add these numbers here and in the end it's bigger than 77 bit. For the 77 bit at the end I use the non-rounded numbers here. Then we have the second part of the Enigma key space which is the ring settings key space and here are two rings effective for the key space 
This means we have 26 multiplied 26 positions for the rings of the Enigma. These are 676 different positions, which are about 10 bit. And then we have the rotor positions key space. That means the rotors of, of the Enigma, which start positions these have. And of course, each rotor has 26 different start positions. So we have to multiply 26, 26 and 26 and get a, get a number of 17,576 rotor positions, which is about 15 bit. And then comes the biggest part of the Enigma key space. And this is a plug setting. So the Enigma has plugs that can exchange letters. And with the three rotor Enigma later in the war, they used about, or they always use 10 plugs in. And with 10 plugs, we have this equation here for a general number of plugs, which is n here. And when we enter the n equal to 10 in this equation here, we get about 48 bits for the plug settings key space, which is the biggest part of the Enigma key space. And then you multiply all these numbers, as I said, the rounded, the non-rounded up numbers, and then you get the final key space size, and I also rounded this year up. So we have a final key space size of the Enigma cipher machine of 77 bit. Now let's have a look at some modern ciphers key space examples. And as I already said, modern ciphers have a bit string as a key. For instance, you have here a key with 101011 and so on. And this is the key of a modern cryptographic cipher. And today we say that a minimum of 128 bit should be used with modern ciphers, but it's also advised to use 256 bit instead. And as an example, you see here the number of possible keys with 128 bits. I do not even know how to pronounce or to say this number here. And this number can also be expressed as a multiplication of twos. So here you know where these two to the power comes from. We have two, multiply two, multiply two, multiply two, and so on. And if we, if we do this, for this number, we have to write down 128 twos. And this equals to two to the power of 128. And the fascinating thing with key spaces is that when you add only a single bit to the key space, of course, it doubles the key space size because a bit can have two values and we have to multiply these. So we, with each bit we add to the key space or to the key of a modern cipher that we construct, we double the key space size. And this can be seen here as an exponential function of the growth. And what I did here is I created a graph and on the X axis, you have the number of bits in our key. So it starts with one bit, two bit, three bit, and so on. And it goes on and on and on. And on the Y axis, you can see how many different keys our currently constructed cipher or currently cipher that we look at, look at has. And as you can see here, beginning with 18, 19, 20, here with 20, we have over 1 million different keys. And before I created this graph here, I created a graph with 1 to 128 and it just, the key space sizes just explode as you can see with this number here. And clearly this key space size here, we cannot search through today. And probably also not in the future unless the quantum computer is ready to do so. But this is another topic. Now let's have a look at three examples of modern key, uh, ciphers key spaces. And I have examples for block ciphers, for stream ciphers, and then an example for an asymmetric cipher. And the first example is the data encryption standard DES. And the key space size is 56 bit or two to the power of 56. And it's not 64 bit as many people think because eight bits in the key of the DES are parity bits and they are not part of the real cryptographic key. So DES has a key space size of 2 to the power of 56. And as I already said, this can today be searched through with specialized hardware or even with cloud computing in about a day. Then we have the advanced encryption standard or AES. And the AES has a key space size of 128 bit, 192 bit and 256 bit. And as I already said, when you use the AES, for security purposes, I would stick to the 256-bit version of the AES. Then we have the stream ciphers in my examples here. And 
One of the stream ciphers is RC4. I also have a video on RC4 if you are interested in details. And with this cipher, the key space sizes vary from 40 bit to 2048 bit. But as we already know, RC4 is not secure anymore, so it should not be used for security purpose. And then there's a new cipher that is currently being implemented in Crypto2 in a bachelor thesis with a nice visualization of the internal workings. It's not finished right now, but probably in the near future. And this ChaCha cipher has a key space size of 128-bit and 256-bit. Then we have the RSA cipher as an example for the asymmetric ciphers. And the key space size from RSA, you can say, varies between 2 to infinity. You can choose the key space size on your own. And the key space size is often referred to as the length of the module. And for instance, you probably have seen 1024-bit keys with our RSA, but today we assume these are too weak. So usually 2048-bit are used now, but I would also recommend to use 4096-bit or more for any security purposes. Now, after having a look at different classic and modern ciphers in theory, let's have a look at some examples of modern and classic ciphers and their key space sizes and how we can estimate or, or feel how huge such key space sizes are, for instance, with the key searcher in Crypto2. I'm here now in Crypto2 and I want to have a look at some classic and modern ciphers and their key spaces. And the first cipher and the first example we had in the slides is the Caesar cipher. So I want to have a look at the Caesar cipher. And the Caesar cipher, as we know, has a key space size of 26. So I have a look now at the brute force analysis of the Caesar cipher. And maybe you also know this template from my Caesar video. And what this template does is it takes a cipher text here and then it tests all different keys from 1 to 26. Not, not very much. And it decrypts these and then it rates these using a cost function. And we set this here to English. And this is a dictionary that's used for our cost function here. And let's just test it. <laughs> and in fact, it also was a German text, but also with an English dictionary, it finds a text. And as you can see, a key space size of 26 can even be searched through with a workspace that's not very optimized for performance in below a second. So Caesar, of course, is not a very um, secure cipher. It has a very small key space. Now let's have a look at a cipher with a really huge key space. And this is our monoalphabetic substitution cipher. And as I said, the monoalphabetic substitution cipher has a key space size of about 2 to the power of 88. And here we have an template for the monoalphabetic substitution cipher. And here you can define the mapping from a source alphabet to a destination alphabet. And in fact, this here is some kind of, you could say, Caesar cipher on lowercase and uppercase letters. And of course, we can change here the mapping and it encrypts and decrypts this. And as we know, the key space size is 2 to the power of 88. But we will see right now that key space size is not the only criteria for a cipher being secure, because as I said, with statistical analysis, we can easily break this. So I have a look at the substitution analysis. Um, mono alphabetic substitution analyzer. And I copied my text, I can just paste it in here and then start this here. And, okay, clearly I made a mistake here. The problem is right now it uses uppercase and lowercase letters. So what we do right now, we will change this only to uppercase. So we use the string operations here, connect it here, connect it here. In fact, the monoalphabetic substitution cipher I created was not on 26 letters, it was on 52 letters on uppercase and lowercase and our analyzer is not built for this. So let's only do this. Okay, I have to change this here to uppercase. So now our example only has uppercase letters as a 
simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. And then we copy this again in our analyzer. And then stop. I have to change the analyzer without spaces. I don't understand why it does not work right now. So we have here this monoalphabetic ciphertext contains more letters than the plain text. Ah, it gets confused because here are some non letters, non alphabet letters. So we have to remove these for the analysis. remove the full stops, commas, things the analyzer thinks. This is also part of, or these are also part of the cipher. So we remove this and this and this, and then play again. And then you see in cryptography, uh, substitution cipher and so on. So then it can solve easily a cipher with a key space size of two to the power of 88. And these are the examples for classical ciphers. Now I want to have a look at key space or at ciphers that are modern. And for that, we have our AES here. And we have a template that performs a, an attack on the AES cipher and uses entropy. For instance, we could use this, this here. And then with the key searcher, you can define parts of the key that you know. And there you can get a feeling of key space sizes. Right now, our analyzer here, the key searcher, will break this encrypted text here. This is encrypted with AES. This string decoder only converts it to binary data. And then the key searcher searches here for AES keys, and it only searches through the first eight bits here, or the last eight bits of the key, and all the other bits are set to one or to, to 11 here. And this is part of the key that we know. And I think that these parts are also ones, so let's test it. Just started it. And then yeah, here we can see, I will make it full screen, everything is one, and then we see advanced encryption standard and so on. And this took, we can restart it, it gives us an estimation about 34, 25 seconds with only one core. And you could change the number of cores that your computer uses for the analysis and so on. But now to get a feeling of key space, so we had four minutes with eight, 16, 24 bit. When I put a star here, we add additional four bit to the key space size that we want to search through. So we have 26 seconds, so we double it, double it, double it, and double it. And then we get, when we search through the key space, one, no, that's wrong, nine minutes, seven minutes. Now let's add only four additional bits to the key space that we want to search through. Then we already get two hours here. And now let's go to about 40 bits. So we have one, two, three, four. Then we have five bits here, we have five bytes. And five bytes are 40 bit. And 40 bit with only a single core on this machine will take about 21 days. So I earlier said in this video that you can search through 40 bit with a single computer in one day. That was, that was not correct. I once searched through 40 bit with a cluster of computers that I had at my university and that were not very fast computers. And I think that were about, I don't know, 20 to 30 computers with several cores. Let's have a look how fast we can search through with four cores. So the size here should be divided by four. No, not exactly, but it, it maybe it goes down a little. So you can speed up the computation, of course, with the key searcher with the cores. And now let's have a look what our key searcher tells us when we would like to search through the DES size. So we have to add two additional bytes. So we have 40 plus 60, uh, 40 plus 16 bits, then we have 56 bits. And 
let's start it again. So we see here right now 56 bit keyspace size, so bits to be tested this is the size of the search through keyspace. <laughs> and now it tells us several thousand days. And this is only a standard computer. Clearly with specialized hardware, 56 bit could be searched through even faster. And this is how you can get an estimation or a feeling of key space sizes just with the key searcher. And you can play around with this. And you could also, with CryptCloud, I think I made an uh, introduction video on Crypto2 where I also present CryptCloud, but maybe I will also make a video about the CryptCloud. You can connect different computers and search through even huger key spaces. And maybe in the future I will make a challenge video where I ask the viewers of this channel, so you, to connect using Crypto2 to CryptCloud and then, for instance, you could search through together through a DS 56-bit cipher space, key space. So this is everything that I wanted to show you in this short video about key spaces and how you can estimate and, and get a feeling of key spaces using Crypto2. So I hope you like this short video. If yes, please give a thumbs up. If no, you know what to do, give a thumbs down. Also, I would be really happy if you subscribe to our channel if you did not yet do so, because this really helps us to grow the channel to make Crypto2 more popular. Also, if you have some requests for videos, feel free to write it below this video or every other video. And then I will have a look at these requests and maybe make a video for you. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.